I typically try to avoid responding to clickbait titles and things like that because a lot of times what it ends up feeling like is people are just clout chasing and trying to get attention off of something that they don't deserve. But because this has such a teachable moment, I felt like it was actually worthy of responding to. Kendrick Lamar did his pop out concert on Juneteenth. It was amazing. It was very unifying in the sense that, you know, there's been enough people talking about it already. You know, there was Crips, there was Bloods, there was different people from different sets, enemies that were there dancing together, all on stage together. There was just a different environment. So so it was a very beautiful moment. All that being said, someone goes on a podcast and then they start saying that they feel like Latinos were underrepresented on that stage. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. It was obviously a very powerful black moment. Well, it's kind of crazy because if you remember in the video I did about the black and brown coalition myth about how Hispanics were largely against civil rights, largely against black advancement, but the second black progress began being made, then they suddenly wanted to align with the struggle. Boom. She's right. Abby, please. This is exactly what fell on me the first time. There's no way I'm bringing this up again with him. No, he's not. Run. Sorry. I'm a gutless flip flop. I started saying, hey, we're people of color too. And hey, we're Hispanic. We're gonna create something specifically so that we can be identified by our type of oppression as well. And so they've done that forever. I think this video perfectly exemplifies it. I wanna demonstrate to you how little they care about black issues, how much they have disdain for us while simultaneously wanting to take part in our struggle. Watch, and our victories. Like the Mexican people were underrepresented there last night. I feel it. I can see that. I can see that too, man, but... And a lot of people are telling me that I sound like bitter or something. Like, I'm not a rapper, fool. I'm not tripping about not being on stage. I'm saying, like... Oh, Jeezy performed, I think, last night. Yeah. Did he? That mm -hmm. would have been nice if he would have been on oh, stage. Oh, if he would have Now, maybe... Maybe the young legend had something to do, so right. he dipped. Right. Because all the artists that did perform were up there. Facts. I respect it was up there i don't i can't keep counting. there was a lot of people that went but so i think that's one of the important points right there right the idea that all of the artists that performed that night were up there besides OGZ. so i think that's an important point that the vast majority of artists that performed there were up on that stage when he was performing not like us when he called everyone on stage i believe it was for the second time the third time excuse me when you look at it and it's like okay yeah then it makes all the sense why there'd be so many black folks there but again this is a juneteenth celebration this, this is a Juneteenth concert, so it makes all the sense in the world. I think OGZ was the only person that didn't pop out? Or were you going to say he's the only Mexican that performed? Both. Did he perform? Was he supposed to perform? He did perform, yeah. He did oh, perform. he did? Mm -hmm. And I didn't see him perform because I caught it late. I saw the clip. I saw I didn't even see that clip. a picture of someone posting that he performed. Do you think it had something to do with it being Juneteenth? I don't understand. There's the key point right there. Do you think it has something to do with it being Juneteenth? I don't understand. This dude is obviously largely uninformed about what Juneteenth is and what, you know, <laughs> what it represents for black people. To be honest with you, I think most of us were. I don't think Juneteenth was a particularly big thing for a long time. I mean, it got more recognition when it became a federal holiday, but for the longest, I don't think most of us knew what Juneteenth was. It wasn't something that was like crazily celebrated. It's actually gained steam, um, I would say probably in maybe mid 2000s. In the early 90s and stuff, I don't remember us ever talking about Juneteenth. But notice that the host here is like kind of pointed out like, hey, maybe this is why. And then this is where this dude puts his entire foot in his mouth. I thought Juneteenth was like on the 16th or something like that. It's on June 19th. It was Juneteenth yesterday. Yeah, it was Juneteenth. I respect it. No, I was Juneteenth. I respect it. Do you? Do you even know what it's about? Let's see. Do you think that has something to do with it? Has something to do with what? The fact that they do the show that day? <laughs> or that there were no Mexicans on stage? There you go. So here, the guy is trying to breadcrumb him into making some sense so he doesn't make a fool of himself. Do you think that has something to do with it? Well, well what? That there were no Mexicans like on the stage? Uh, or, or that... You know, that's the day that he chose. You know, it's really both, but he's like, yeah, there. Do you think it was supposed to be like- First of all, let me start off by saying congratulations to Kendrick Lamar and all of the wonderful individuals that performed last night. Oh yeah, shut up. And this is obviously not a debate. These guys are, you know, they're doing a podcast together. So the guy's not trying to be contentious. And this is something that I have a problem with. I'm always contentious and it's, you know, probably not always so, it's not all, it, it hasn't always served me well to be as contentious as I am. 
Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Market zero. But I can't abide nonsense. I can't abide wrongness. I just can't. So in that scenario, I gotta make sure that you're addressing what I said. So when I pointed it out, I asked a question. And if I ask you a question, I ask you a question for a reason. So when I say, do you think this has something to do with it? And you just move the goalpost immediately or you just immediately digress? Oh, hell no. Granddad, let's whoop this ass right now. Right? And start saying things like, well, you know, first off, congratulate. No, 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 no. Hold on. Do you think that it's on June 10th that that had something to do with it? I would repeat the question. I got to make sure you're addressing that because I said that for a reason. The host said it for a reason. Stand on it. Don't be no little puss nigga and let him just walk past it and then start going into his whatever his original talking points because he knew when he started this that he was going to have to say like, you know, congratulations. Da, 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 da. So now he just wants to go on with his talking point. No, 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 no. I said this for a reason. Let me hold you to it. But of course, you know, this dude is soft host. He ain't really trying to deal with that. So I'm not trying to go racial with it, but I will say. Oh, we're just picking each other, like, picking each other's brains Although, apart. Although... I don't want to go racial with it. But you're talking about La Raza, right? Mexicans not being there at the thing? What do you mean you're not trying to go racial with it? How do you not go racial on Juneteenth? What the hell? On a Juneteenth celebration. A Juneteenth concert. Race is like the fundamental point there. What? It was Juneteenth. And I believe that's in remembrance of the massacre... I don't want to be wrong, but is it in Tulsa or in Selma? I don't even know. Or a place over there? I could be wrong, and I hate to be wrong, but I know it's in remembrance of a massacre that took place, right? Um, I'd like to say that the Mexican people have been persecuted in this wonderful land for a long, long, long time. Mm. And there you have it. I've said it a billion times. This is oppression appropriation. Oppression Olympics. Let's go. People love to be oppressed whenever they feel like there's a victory attached to it. Everyone wants to be part of your victory, but no one wants to be part of your struggle. I remember there was a story that when we were little kids, we had a little audio tape that my mother had the hen or the goose. I think it was the hen. And he's on a farm and he wants to make some bread and he's asking all the different animals for help. You know, who will help me make the bread? And he's asking each person and they're just like, uh, not I, not I, not I. It's each level he's asking for help and no one will help him. Then when it's finally finished and he's like, who will help me eat the bread? And they're just like, I'll help. And he's like, nope, I'm gonna do it by myself. Oppression appropriation is the idea that there are plenty of people who are willing to identify as oppressed people whenever they feel like there's benefits to it, but any other time then they will not. And so when you have things like the Stop Asian Hate Movement, they'll try their best to make themselves out to be great victims of oppression, great victims of hate crimes, despite the fact that about 20 to one hate crimes were black to Asian, right? When in reality, for every one hate crime against an Asian, there were 20 hate crimes against black people. Now you might say, well, what about proportion of population? They're not, it's not proportional still. The proportion of black people to Asian people in this country is not 20 to one, but the proportion of hate crimes is 20 to one. Black people are being, are receiving hate crimes disproportionate. Yet despite that, we got a stop Asian hate movement where they lied and tried to play, uh, tried to paint black people as the faces of it. Likewise, when it came to segregation, Hispanic people largely contributed and participated in it. They had restaurants that specifically said no blacks. They specifically identified as whites and said, hey, we're the same identity of our oppressors. They specifically decried the civil rights movement. They specifically said, I don't want to align with him. I don't want to be with the Negro. I've talked about all of that in my original video called the Black Brown Coalition Myth. So if we know this, then you should understand why when we're talking about Juneteenth, a black holiday specifically for slaves that were freed, that that's why there would be mostly black people, if not exclusively black people on that stage. To add to that, the fact that you don't even understand what Juneteenth is about. I thought it was about a Tulsa massacre. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Now, of course, you know that this podcast, they went ahead and took it down. And now, of course, they're hiding it. And the original person is, you know, trying to, like, basically lay low. But we're not going to forget. These are the same people that will sit there and say, yeah, we should be having all of this money for immigrants and things like that. But then we'll 
deny and dismiss the money that we have towards things like reparations. I feel like that anthem, They Not Like Us, just like how We Gonna Be All Right was a great anthem and really like kind of galvanized the civil rights movement. I think it also should help us to recognize that we can't include everybody else in our cookout and our pop outs. Hispanics aren't like us either. They'll always try their best to, sh to rope themselves into our struggle. People of color, black and brown, try to find an ever a time where Biden specifically talks about black American. They'll always talk about black and brown people. They not like us neither.